In this segment, uh, we will look at high power utility related applications of power electronics. And uh, we have already talked about in other segments that uh, power electronics are essential for uh, uh, renewables based uh, electric generation. But they also have other uh, applications in, in uh, power systems we will take a look at here. So the nature of uh, uh, power systems is changing because of this distributed generation as shown here. Uh, this slide comes from AVB, uh, courtesy of AVB, and you can see that uh, utilities uh, of yesterday and even today, they are somewhat vertically integrated as shown on the left, but uh, there are a lot of distributed distribu generation that's coming online uh, as shown on the right here. Uh, one prominent example of uh, uh, using renewables is in the form of wind and uh, <coughs> it could be a, uh, using a, an induction machine uh, with a wound rotor as shown here uh, where you see that uh, most of the power from the stator of this induction generator goes into the utility grid, but in the rotor circuit, uh, which has uh, uh, slip rings and brushes, uh, we can uh, inject currents of appropriate frequency and magnitude so that uh, this can provide us with reactive power, as well as it can draw reactive power if need be. But the future is really where uh, we have these uh, PMAC machines uh, or uh, uh, in induction machines, I should say, AC machines, either permanent magnet or induction machines, and all the power flows through power electronics based on the, the structures that we have seen earlier. Another uh, <coughs> big example of uh, renewables-based uh, electric generation is in terms of photovoltaic systems where the output is DC, maybe you're feeding into single phase or three phase, but you have to have power electronics in the middle, and we want to operate these at uh, the maximum power point of these solar arrays. Our fuel cells, they produce DC, and uh, so we have to convert them that into AC. Uh, we, with uh, renewable uh, sources, uh, which are variable in nature, uh, we need, uh, we possibly could benefit from storage and this could be in terms of a flywheel. So when there's excess power available, we can speed up this flywheel and uh, power is flowing this way from the utility to the flywheel. And uh, when, uh, the, when power is needed in the utility system, uh, we can draw it from here and the speed comes down and the power flows this way here. <coughs> So we have seen uh, these power electronics loads, uh, adjustable speed drives, for example, and uh, which could be uh, operated with a single, simple system like this, but this also could be a switch mode converter here, and the power could flow this way or this way over here. The other applications like dual feeder, uh, so the, the power electronics could act like a switch, uh, you know, normally power may be coming through feeder one like this, but if there's a disturbance on this feeder, then uh, this switch opens up and this closes and the power flows like this and the load hardly feels the interruption of power. Then we have uninterruptible power supplies where we have a critical load here and, uh, <coughs> and there's a storage in form of batteries so even if this utility were to disappear uh, from this uh, storage, we can supply this critical load. Uh, there are dynamic voltage restorers where uh, if you want to maintain the voltage across this load, even though there may be a sag in the voltage coming in, we can inject certain voltage in series to make sure that the voltage across the load remains uh, unaffected. And uh, there are high voltage DC transmission systems uh, one example uh, of this uh, Pacific Northwest Southwest intertie is shown here, where by means of uh, arrangements like this, power could flow this way or this way here. Uh, 
these uh, DC transmission systems uh, could also uh, utilize uh, voltage link uh, ideas and, uh, and this is done uh, in this example of cross sound cable uh, between uh, New Haven, Connecticut and uh, Shoreham, New York and this comes, uh, slide comes from ABB. Uh, then uh, there are so-called flexible AC transmission systems, FACTS. So if you look at uh, an, a, a power system uh, a, in terms of this one line diagram uh, where you have uh, voltage at one end, this voltage at the other end and these two are connected by a transmission line and let's say that's mostly inductive. So just the reactance is shown here <coughs> and you can see that the power flow here is downhill on angle. So if this angle, if this voltage is lying behind in its phase angle compared to this, then the power would flow uh, from here to here given by this sine delta. So when delta is uh, positive, uh, because minus is shown explicitly over here, so when delta is positive, uh, power is going to flow given by this expression from left to right. Okay, and uh, of course it can reverse if uh, this voltage were to lead this one here. But uh, <coughs> what it shows is that the power flow that we have depends upon the the product of the magnitudes of these two voltages. Uh, depends upon inversely on the the reactance that we have and uh, sine of this uh, angle delta, which is the phase angle difference between these two voltages. So uh, it is important to keep the, the voltages at uh, power system buses to be close to their uh, nominal values. And uh, we can do that by drawing this reactive power, in this case by putting an inductor. So this is the bus over here. And uh, by means of these thyristors here, we can control the amount of reactive power that is drawn from this bus. And if the bus voltage was too high, it can be pulled down. Or we can connect this cap capacitor here. This is just to uh, prevent large inrush currents here. For discussion purposes, we can short uh, neglect this. And uh, we can connect this uh, capacitor here to pull the voltage up if uh, the voltage is too low. Because in this case, the reactive power would be supplied by the capacitor to the bus over here. So this is called uh, thyristor controlled reactor, TCR. This is, uh, uh, usually these are called static voltage uh, uh, controllers, SVCs, where the capacitors is either connected or is uh, taken out. But uh, we can control the amount of reactive power in a continuous manner by connecting a uh, so-called stat com static compensator. So it's really a voltage uh, link system, if you will, uh, you know, but it's really one half of the voltage link system. We can maintain the voltage across this capacitor <coughs> from this AC side, but here we can either supply the reactive power or draw the reactive power over here. So it's a very flexible device, okay. So that's another application of power electronics here. And uh, another application is so-called uh, uh, thyristor controlled series capacitors. Uh, this slide comes from Siemens and uh, basically what we have is uh, a capacitor in parallel which, with which we have a thyristor controlled reactor and by resonance between these two, uh, we can control the impedance uh, between these two points over here. Okay. And uh, so we can uh, control the amount of power uh, that would flow on this line, okay. Then a very flexible system is so-called unified Unified power flow controller, UPFC, <coughs> where we have this, uh, uh, you know, STATCOM function uh, being shown over here, and here we are injecting a voltage in series over here. So, because if you look at this power expression here, it was E1, E2, X, sine, 
delta. So if you can control this delta, you can also control the power flow here. So this can be operated in several modes. So this is a very uh, flexible scheme and which is uh, this slide coming from Siemens shows uh, uh, these different modes of operation that we can have. So this brings us to the end of this segment where uh, we have looked at several uh, utility related applications at high power of uh, power electronic uh, circuits and uh, converters we have seen.